Hello everybody and welcome back to the Aggie Books blog. Today I'm going to do the unpopular opinions tag and I'm going to be very fast about it because this is the fourth time that I'm doing this as the outfit today. Um, so yeah, that's about it because I have 8 minutes on my camera before it starts filming again and I have to do it again. Okay, so the first question is a popular series that everybody loves but you do not like. For me is The Immortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. I just don't like the characters in this series and I am a little bit past half of the book if you can see it. I just don't like it and there's no way I can get to it. Simon just got way too idiotic for my taste. If if you can believe that. Like he was a good guy and then he becomes something else with his transformation. So that just ruined it for me. And then Jay's and um, Cassie, oh my god, people just get it together. You know what I mean? It's just, it's too over the place for me. Okay, so a popular series people hate but you actually love. That's going to be The Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. I know a lot of people hate this series, it's starting because it was um, a fan fiction from Twilight. Um, I just, I can't see it that way. For me they're two separate books, even though the characters have um, similarities between each other, like Bella and um, Anna and then Christian and Edward, they sort of are similar but not really. And the books are so differently themed, you can't say that they're the same person. So that's something else and also it was a different book like when you picked it up you had or at least I had no idea of what was actually in it and it it's it ends up being a very quick fast-paced read and for somebody who likes to imagine half of the stuff like I do this is a very good book if English is your second language this is actually a good book there aren't very many words that you have to pick up a dictionary to actually know what, their mean, what the meaning of the word are as opposed to some other authors who do do that so that's why I like Fifty Shades of Grey series that you read or a book that you read that the the characters didn't end up who you wanted them to be I have three of those for you if you haven't read it I've tried it I'm trying to be as um, unspoiled as I can for the spoiler alerts for those books. So those will be the Hex Hall series, the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness, and uh, the Vampire Academy series, believe it or not. However, after the Bloodlines came out, I'm totally happy with that one, so that one's a middle ground over there. Their fourth one is a popular book that you hardly reach for a genre. For me it's dystopian. I don't actually like dystopian. I've read The Hunger Games, I haven't read The Insurgent or The Selection series which for me will count as dystopian because it's a different uh, different government and stuff like that. And that's actually something that I don't necessarily reach for just because it means that everything changed and is not actually for the better. And usually I like more of a historical background with uh, sci-fi and something like that for if it were something that I was reaching for as opposed to seeing some other reviews online following you all on YouTube and, and see what I like. So that's question five. For me it was Jace from the Immortal Instruments. The guy was all over the place. He's one person, he's another person. He has to always be somebody because of his past but he can't actually sit down and see his future. So that's a little bit annoying for me. Simon, because he had to change with his transformation, but he couldn't keep himself the same way. I don't know, that seems to me like his character wasn't all that grounded. And um, Derek Nova for, uh, Novak from A Shade of Vampire by Bella Forrest. Dear Lord, did I hate that person. When I usually, I have two sets for, for books. Either I hate you or I love you. Usually I don't have a mil middle ground for characters when I'm reading. And this guy got so much on my nerve that halfway through book four, which I have no idea how I got there, mind you, it's it's that it's all I can do not to throw the book at the wall. And I know that's a little bit violent, but sometimes they just get on my nerves and Derek Nova just did that. He was just so stupid and arrogant and completely aware of what he was doing, but did nothing about it to change. So there you go. That's it. Rant over. <laughs> 
Okay, a popular author that you don't seem to like. Don't hate me for this, okay? <laughs> but George R. R. Martin. I love Game of Thrones, the series, and we'll go back to that. But the way these books are written, by the time that I get used to one character, he changes it to somebody else. And then I feel like I have to keep up. It gives me a headache to try and keep up with him all over. I'm halfway or a little bit less than halfway through the book. And I've had it on an audiobook, which usually helps me to read. But this book, I've had it for years. Year, almost four years since I had my dog, which if you can see, it was one of the first true toys that they had. But I just, I can't do it. I, for some reason, I can't do it. It doesn't mean I'm willing to stop trying because I know they're good. My best friend loves them. It just means that as of right now, I don't think I'll be able to finish it. Even on an audiobook, which is so. Okay, so things that you're tired about reading, like uh, scenes or stuff like that. For me, is that always the heroine has to second guess herself before she gets to the plane, like Katniss. She doesn't want this, she just wants to be a regular girl. The girl from the selection, oh my god, I don't want to be selected, I just want to be a five or a six or whatever that is. And then they have to do it. Can somebody just want the change for, for a change? I mean, if it were the male character, I don't think he'll be having so many difficulties getting there, but why is it always the females who want that have to second guess themselves and, and just have to do it out of need? That's, that's one of the things. Um, so a book series that you have no intention of finishing. For me that will be the Insurgent series. I just didn't pick it up when the whole boom about the series was going on. For some reason I didn't want to grab it. So by the time I, well by this time already two movies have gone out. I still haven't picked it up and now I know that, spoiler alert, the main character dies so I don't that's not one of the things I read for sad books I don't I don't want to pick up a book to cry I mean if it's there it's there and I'll, I'll go ahead and read it but it's not one of the things that I look for in a book if and it's also dystopian so that's one thing that's two for two okay so the sayings say the book is always better than the movie but what movies or TV series do you like better than the books here we go. One of the ones that I was telling you about for the TV shows. I love the TV show for this book. I think it's so much better than the book in the sense that all the descriptions are there and you can see it instead of having to read page after page after, after freaking page. Also, the changing of the characters, it's a lot more organic than it would have been in the book, I think. I mean, he changes every, what, 10, 15 pages or so? And then... In the TV show, that's a lot more fluid, if you will. So I love, 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 love this TV show. I have to catch up on it, actually. Another one that I think the movie... It's not that it's better than the book. I just love that movie of that particular book. And it's one of the ones that I don't want. You know how you see a movie and then you're always wondering, well, why my favorite scene didn't make it in there? I know it would have taken two more hours to make the whole book verbatim or something like that. But Pride and Prejudice uh, by Jane Austen, of course, it is one of my favorite movies of all time. However, I do have a very specific favorite movie from that one because there's been many adaptations to the film. And that is the one that has Keira Knightley on it. I love, love, love that Elizabeth and that Mr. Darcy. Just, I, I think those are my, my favorite ones. It's the one that I pick up and grab when I feel like I have a happy ending, pick me up kind of thing. And then the last one but not least is going to be The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I love this book. I really did. However, this book is very, very, very thick. It's near 900 pages, if not 900 pages, actually. Yep, 930 pages. And it's all about the building of a church. Most of the book also it's about how, well the whole description about building it, of how the people want the light to see and how it comes into the church and how the arches look and um, how it's almost about the, the top of the trees and the views and 
and so forth and it's not that it's bad it's just that I don't like it when the authors leave nothing to the imagination and they put you in exactly in that place somehow that becomes a little tedious and you end up kind of sunning out until you reach another um, interesting grabbing piece of literature inside of the book so for me the TV show was a lot better it's 12 chapters it is an hour and a half each and oddly enough Mr. Darcy from my favorite movie is actually in this TV show from the Pillars of the Earth again you see that that kind of writing is very nice for when you have a movie or a TV show adaptation because you see everything that you read about almost everything that you read about and that one is actually very almost to the letter when it comes down to the book and from the movie. They did a very nice job. Okay, you guys, this is all a unpopular opinions tag. Uh, thank you very much to the person that created this tag. I think it was unbelievable awesome as, long, as well as original because you don't see very many people who tell you things that they don't like mixed with things that they do like. So, awesome. Um, and awesome and good for everybody else because now we see everybody else's opinions as well. I will go ahead and put uh, the original video link in the description below as well as the many ways that you can get in contact with me in the Agig Books blog. I will see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye!